Hello, my name is Ryan, and for this presentation I will be discussing the different aspects of the devastating Bankia Dam disaster which happened August 1975 on the Ru River of the Henan province in China. It is one of the most unheard of disasters to happen in history because it is not taught in schools for reasons unknown. The breaking of this dam is said to be the most dreadful dam failure in all of history. When the Bankia Reservoir breached at 1 o'clock in the morning, around 700 million cubic meters of flood water was released breaking 61 downstream dams and wreaking havoc onto the cities that lied below connected to the Ru River. Resulting from the flooding, about 26,000 people died nearly instantly and roughly 150,000 people lost their lives due to epidemics and famine. People were getting diseases and starving to death from it. Along with the deaths, about 6 million buildings collapsed, affecting millions of people's lives. <clears throat> But what caused the dam to break in the first place is said to be from the intense rainfall brought by the natural disaster Typhoon Nina. Typhoon Nina passed over the Bankyo Dam and Ru River, dropping a total of 64.2 inches of rainfall on the area, 33 inches of which fell in only a six hour span. And although the dam breakage may seem to be entirely caused by this vicious typhoon, I believe other factors play a major part as well. Factors such as government, engineers involved, issues going on at the time of the building of the dam, etc. And this is basically what I'm arguing about for this presentation. Was the Bankyo Dam failure of August 1975 a natural disaster cause, or could it possibly be from certain human factors? If there was a larger human factor involved, then the failure could have basically been avoided. If it was not able to be entirely avoided, it could have been at the very least minimized. In fact, at the time of the building of the Bankyo Dam in 1950, there were multiple human factors. The reason the Bankyo Dam was being built in 1950 was because the Hawaii River Basin was severely flooding and the dam was also to be used as generation of electricity. Design of the dam is an error I will get to, but first, I believe the leader of China at the time was a factor of the cause of failure in the dam. <clears throat> China was being ruled by Mao Zedong at the time. He led in a way that so everything was done quickly and efficiently, using medium, minimum resources to get the job done as cheap as possible. He also ruled in a socialistic way, so building the dam was based entirely on engineering, and the minimum resources were used to save money. Also, at the time of the building, there was a hydrologist named Chen Zing who had some proposals for the dam. He said the dam should have had 12 sluice gates, which are used to control the water level, but he was criticized for being too conservative. In the sluice gate, count was decreased to five. And the criticism of Chen Tsing's proposals didn't end with the sluice gates. He also recognized that there was an insufficient amount of dikes and trenches built beyond the Bankyo Dam to hold off flood water. He proposed more to be dug out for safety, just in case the dam did in fact break. But once again, Chen Tsing was criticized for being too conservative. The engineers involved in the building of the Bankyo Dam were very confident in their design. They're confident enough to nickname the Bankyo Dam the Iron Dam. It was named with such a confident nickname, although the builders of the dam ignored some very logical proposals from Chen because they believed the design was already strong enough to withstand any natural disaster. <clears throat> I believe this behavior used toward the building of such a major structure was a huge cause of the amount of deaths and tragedy brought to the people below the Bankyo Dam. When certain key features are ignored, it is almost obvious something bad would occur. But the way China was led, and how disagreeing with leaders was actually punishable at times, it could have been a major factor to their behavior. Along with stubborn behavior towards the building of the dam, I believe communication was a giant part of death count and epidemic done by the flooding. Communication is key to announcing what is expected to happen and what is happening at the moment. When communication is poor in times of trouble, it leads to confusion, panic, and sometimes even death for the public. Typhoon Nina was not an extremely fast-moving storm. It was arriving at Ru River from the southeast. The path and severity was predicted by meteorologists, so it was known that it was going to be hitting the Bankyo Dam. And although severity was known, there were no evacuation orders sent. In the three days of the typhoon happening, people believed they were safe from any flooding because they all believed the quote-unquote Iron Dam was strong enough to withstand such a storm. After the first day, communication wires were cut due to the storm conditions, so evacuation orders were too late to be sent. With that, there was no other way to communicate, 
to the public below the Bankyo Dam. I believe this could have been fixed if there is an evacuation signal created at the time of the building of the dam, something similar to a tornado siren that would alert people to evacuate in the case of danger and lost communication. So the combination of the Ch leader of China in 1950, the unacknowledged warnings of an expert hydrologist, and miscommunication of a disaster occurring seemed to be a major cause in, of death and epidemic, just as much as Typhoon Nina was. The Bankyo Dam disaster cannot be blamed entirely by a natural weather disaster when there was a major human factor involved in the breakage of the dam. This brings me back to my argument of natural disaster versus human factors. Based off of evidence from this Bankyo Dam disaster, not all damage and chaos after a natural disaster should be blamed entirely on nature before all aspects of what could have been done by humans are investigated. When something is being built or designed, there can always be ways to prevent failure and chaos. When the Bankyo Dam was built, a certain amount of deaths and epidemic could have been prevented if engineers listened to Chen Zing and took more caution. By thinking ahead, and maybe even taking extra precaution and sacrifices of money, safety of all could be ensured in future structures and design. <clears throat> so this concludes my presentation on the Bankyo Dam disaster of 1975. It is important to recognize everything going on when something is being built. Economy, government, other people, basically everything. We can learn from mistakes from the past like human factors in the Bankyo disaster to ensure the safety of everybody and the safety of the earth for the future. Thank you.